اسمحوا لي أن أتكلم في لغة الأم أنا اسمي أصالة سيارة أصلي من خراص الخليل مولودة في بيت لحم أصلي من أرض الوطن من وطن السلام من وطن الحرية My name is Asala Sayara. I'm originally from the southwest of Hebron, a village named Kharas. I was born in the city of Beit Lahem. I'm a counselor, public speaker, and social worker. But none of this sets aside my Palestinian identity, rather within because my Palestinian identity is what defines me and what makes me belong. I would like to first introduce our first speaker, Jeremy Heathcote, who is an Aboriginal community leader. He is the New South Wales First Nations representative for the Tertiary Education Union who will be doing the acknowledgement to country. Where I am today, as most people know, is on Gadigal land, uh, one of the lands of the Aboriginal people. We have never been ceded. Um, this has been our connection for over 65,000 years. It's really important to remember that. And remember, the elders have gone before us. And some of the elders from way back, a lot of people might not know about this, but when we were invaded, we had a lot of Aboriginal men, warriors, who fought the invaders. We had no weapons back then, but we took a stand. And that made us strong people. That's why we're still here today. And people have asked me why I support Palestine. It's pretty simple, it's two reasons. It's the right thing to do, to start us. And also, you see, between us as Aboriginal people and what you guys are going through, the same sort of things. Dispossessed from our land, racist attacks of people, the international trauma that we were facing. And your kids will face this, your grandkids will face this for many years to come. It's really important to remember that and the struggle we've had, the struggle we've had with you as well. Our rights, just Redfern, not too far from me, that's where Aboriginal rights pretty much started in the 60s and 70s. And the Palestinian community are a part of that too, supporting us. It's really important that we do support you just like you supported us. Um, solidarity with everyone here. Um, the elders from this area, um, we had, like I said, had that connection. Um, and the surrounding communities as well, like the Bidjigal um, to ourselves, the Wongul, Baramadigal, um, Darig, um, at the west as well, Kemeragal, Pringai. All these lands are really important. So it's really important to remember that and remember that culture. You live on our land, pay our respects when you go home as well. But seriously, do some research on the past history of Aboriginal people. And you'll see that we stood up for the struggle as well, like you guys are setting up for your struggle. So it's really important that we do acknowledge our land, acknowledge our elders, elders past, present and emerging. And thank you very much. the Palestinian resistance. Woo! Because if something deserves our attention, it is the Palestinian resistance. Yeah! If something deserves our attention, it is the freedom fighters. Yeah! We also mourn. We mourn the lives Taken. In these two days, just until now, the death toll reaches 
436 innocent lives taken by the Israeli occupation. Shame. So in this moment, can we please take a moment of silence to mourn the lives taken? And if you would like to recite Surat al-Fatiha, please do. group here. Firstly, good on all of us for coming out tonight to show which side we're on in this historic struggle for freedom. The most important question everyone has to answer right now in the world is which side are you on? Are you on the side of the colonizer? Are you on the side of the imperialists? Of the racists? Of the regimes and the governments of the world? Or are you on the side of the oppressed? I'm fighting back for freedom! I'm fighting for equality! For a world without racism and oppression! For a world of dignity and peace! That's the side we're on! And that's why we're on the side of the Palestinians! And that's important! And we're on the side of the Palestinians, not just when they're the victims and being massacred! We're also on the side of the Palestinians when they fight back! And that's crucial! What kind of person is only on the side of the oppressed when they're being passively massacred? What kind of person is only on the side of the oppressed when they're not fighting back? That person is not really against oppression. Because we know only a struggle against oppression can ever actually end oppression. And the Palestinians have given us, over the decades, so much inspiration. As a people that have not given up, that will never give up. And we'll always keep fighting for a world for their freedom. And that's extra important because we know what side the governments are on. We know what side our government is on. And we know that tonight, shamefully, they are going to light up the Opera House with the Israeli flag. It's disgusting. It's disgusting that that's the signal that our government wants to send to Israel and to the world. And we know what's going to happen in the next week. We know what Israel's got planned for the Palestinians because they've been humiliated, because they've been shown to not be invincible. They've been humiliated. We know now, and Benjamin Netanyahu is saying it in his own words, he's saying that every corner, I quote, every corner of Gaza is going to be targeted. There are 2.3 million people that live in Gaza. Every corner is going to be targeted. There are ministers and MPs in his own government, in his own ruling party, openly calling for a second Nakba. They're calling for a Nakba that should go further than the first Nakba. So here we have the Israeli government openly calling for genocide. Openly calling for genocide. And our government says, we support that. We're going to light up the Opera House in the Israeli flag. So do you know what we're going to do tonight? We're going to march to the Opera House. At the end of these speakers, that's where we'll all be heading. We're marching to the Opera House. Uh, the police have agreed to facilitate that march. We want a peaceful march, you know, but we're going to take it to the Opera House and say, we support the Palestinian struggle. <laughs> Governments and regimes everywhere support Israel, but we, the people everywhere, support the Palestinians. Okay, I just want to say quickly as well, we've had already one, you know, Zionist try and cause trouble. We don't want that tonight. We want to keep the focus on where it should be. We know the media are here, they want pictures of scary Arabs doing scary things. You know, we're here to send them a message. We're angry, we're passionate, but we're not going to be distracted by any Zionist idiot that wants to come and cause trouble. So stick together, stick united tonight. It's going to be an excellent protest. There's protests all around the world. It's a mighty movement for freedom that we are part of. And with that, I'll introduce our next speaker. Our next speaker is Ahmed. Ahmed has, he's, he's a Palestinian activist, has been for a long time. He's from the Palestine Action Group as well. He's just returned from Palestine himself. And he has family 
in Gaza right now. Um, so this is exactly what we're here to protest for. Please welcome uh, Alvin. I want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which we meet today. And we pay my respect to the elders past, present and emerging. This land was never ceded. Indeed, resistance is justified when Palestine is occupied. Resistance is justified as long as Palestine is occupied. Resistance is justified as long as Palestinians continue to face massacres, pogroms, land confiscation in the West Bank, Jenin, Nablus, Tolkarem, day in and day out. Resistance is justified as long as more than two millions of Palestinians in Gaza are forced to live in an open-air prison for the past 15 years. As long as Palestinians in Jerusalem and the surrounding cities are being ethnically cleansed and forced to live under the boots of the Zionist, fascist, occupation day in and day out for the past 75 years. Yes. As long as the Zionist system of occupation continues to desecrate the Palestinian sacred sites, Al-Aqsa Mosque, shame. I'm not here to tell you that Palestinians have the right to resist this criminal system of occupation, this system of apartheid, this settler colonial regime that is called the State of Israel. I'm not here to cite clauses and provisions from the international law legitimating this right. I'm not here to confront or debunk the bigoted argument that Hamas is committing terrorist acts of aggression against the State of Israel. I'm not here to explain that Israel is a colonial occupying power and the Palestinians as the indigenous people are fighting back and struggling for liberation from decades and decades of living under the boots of this criminal military occupation. I'm certainly not here to go on and on about condemning violence and calling for instead a peaceful resolution for the Palestinian question and what's going on on the ground right now. Because in their just liberation struggle, the Palestinian people have every single right to use any means possible, and I mean any means possible, to protect themselves and fight for their rights and freedom. What's happening now, what's happening today, has been happening for the past 75 years. But the world has just woken up to such a reality because there's Israeli blood being spilt in Palestine, in Palestine now. Because this myth of the army that can never be conquered has been crushed by the Palestinian resistance. This war is not just on Gaza. This war is against Palestinians everywhere in historic Palestine, in Jenin, in Nablus, in Algelia, in Tolkarem, and everywhere in Jerusalem. It is a war that is enabled by the US, by all these Arab governments who are vying to normalize with the state of Israel. And it's enabled. Shame, yes, shame. It's enabled by the EU and its all member states, as well as this country. who arm, fund, and support this genocidal apartheid regime. For too long, for too long, the world has sat by and watched and allowed Israel to disrespect international law and perpetrate this savage and barbaric regime of apartheid against the Palestinians. And what happened last Saturday was the natural and inevitable outcome. So resistance is definitely justified as long as the Palestinian land is occupied and as long as this apartheid regime system is imposed on Palestinians everywhere.
introduce our next speaker, Jasmine Alrawi, who is a Global Solidarity Officer and a member of the Students for Justice in Palestine at Sydney University. Please welcome Jasmine. coming out here today. I think it's really important that we come out to support Palestine when every single politician has come out with full-fledged support of Israel's bombing and genocide against Palestinians. Our government has lined up behind the murderous apartheid regime of Israel, lining up alongside far-right Israeli politicians who are calling for another Nakba on Palestinians, a Nakba that they say will overshadow the Nakba of 1948. And it's an absolute disgrace that the Sydney Opera House is going to be lit up in the colours of the Israeli flag.
what it will take to liberate Palestine. It's these mass revolts across the Middle East that will tear down every single border that Israel has erected around Palestine. Palestinians are fighting and resisting their oppression. They should continue fighting for land back and for liberation. And it's great to see so many people out here today to show that Palestinians have every right to resist. And we have to support them. Thank you. one more announcement and that is that we know that this struggle uh, for freedom in Palestine uh, has been a long one and it's going to continue uh, to be a long struggle. Uh, the recent events have shown and given hope I think to many people around the world that Israel can be defeated. That's important. That's something we should always remember. People thought apartheid in South Africa would never be ended. It was ended. It was overthrown. can also be overthrown. Yeah. To do that is going to require a massive movement, a long movement and a massive movement of all of us, all of the people of the world around the place, here in the Western world, in the imperialist countries who back up Israel. We know the US has sent another uh, aircraft carrier to be close to their friend, Israel, to rearm them. Because you know, they're so concerned. They're so concerned about civilian lives, haven't you heard, in the last few days? Yeah, right. Uh, so they're planning to send even more weapons to Israel. Um, we need a movement in the imperialist countries. There's going to be a movement. There already is a mass movement in a bunch of the Arab countries and Muslim countries in the Middle East. Yeah. Rising up against Israel and also against their own regimes that back Israel, which is very important. Why is Gaza a prison? Not just because of Israel, but also because of the Egyptian regime that locks up and imprisons the Palestinians at the Rafa crossing as well. So shame on the Egyptian regime, shame on the Saudi regime and all the others. Uh, my point in saying that is that we are going to come back and protest again this Sunday. This Sunday, 1 o'clock, we'll be here again. Spread the word to everyone. Let's make it even bigger than today. We've got thousands out here today. We want thousands more. 1 o'clock, Sunday. Spread the word everywhere you can. There's going to be protests all around Australia next weekend and all around the world. Um, so please keep coming back. All right, our final speaker before we hit the road and we march down to the Opera House to show that it's the Palestinians uh, that we support, not the, Israeli, uh, not the Israelis. Our final speaker is Fahad Ali. He's a long-running Palestinian activist and academic, um, and he's going to talk to us more. We're taking our land back. We're taking our land back! I preferred, prepared a couple of words for today, um, but I might go a bit off the cuff, so please excuse me. Um, the first thing I want to say is, I've been Palestinian my whole life. Yeah! Um, very proud to be Palestinian, um, but the experience of being a Palestinian is that every single day you are faced with the cruel injustice, you are faced with the horrific atrocities that Israel delivers to our people. It's not a surprise, it is not new. This is our reality, all right? So when Gaza was being bombed, it was not something to me that came out of nowhere. We've been through this before. It's not the first time this has happened. But this is the first time that we've had so many people come together to say enough is enough. And the reason 
I say this, the reason I'm making this point is because there is very little that I see in the conflict, in the war, in the aggression of the Zionist regime onto our people that moves me to tears. But this morning I cried. And the reason I cried Happy. was because I was so overjoyed to see the amount of support that we now have. A rally like this, a protest like this, of this many people on a Monday evening was not possible 10 years ago. Now, I want to share a quote with you. It was only when all else had failed, when all channels of peaceful protest had been barred to us, that the decision was made to embark on violent forms of political struggle. We did so not because we desired such a course, but solely because the government had left us with no other choice. Who do you think said that? Who do you think said that? Do you think it was a Palestinian? That was Nelson Mandela! And I was really happy today to see the response from the South African government. The South African government said today, it can no longer be disputed that apartheid South Africa's history is occupied Palestine's reality. As a result, the decision by Palestinians to respond to the brutality of the settler Israeli apartheid regime is unsurprising. If you want to know what apartheid looks like, look at Palestine. And who better to trust than the people who went through it first? If there's any South Africans in the house tonight, please make some noise. And thank you, South Africa. So I want you to try to understand what Palestinians are feeling right now. We suffered 75 years of dispossession. We've been denied our rights to life and liberty, liberty under an ever worsening occupation by a colonial regime that has perpetrated every kind of atrocity upon us. We have begged and we have pleaded for the world to intervene. We've organized protests, we've organized boycotts, we've given the world so much. We come here and we speak truth. Every single time bombs are dropping on Gaza, we speak truth. We speak truth to power and we don't shy away from it. But what have we gained in return? No nothing. The world has done nothing to support us. Non-violent protest has been cri criminalized. Governments, including the government of this colonial entity that we call Australia, are tripping over themselves to outlaw, boycott, divestment and sanctions on Israel. They're tripping over themselves to outlaw and criminalize free speech of Palestinians. There are more settlements, more pogroms, and more home demolitions than ever before. You tell me, when 2,000 civilians were killed in Gaza in 2014, did they light up the Oprah House? They didn't give a shit! So these people, these hypocrites, they can criticize and they can condemn all they like. But they don't get to ignore us. They don't get to silence us. They don't get to refuse to show any support and solidarity and then claim to have the moral high ground. Resistance is always justified for as long as Palestine is occupied. I want to say it's a kind of unique arrogance on the part of these settlers to think that they can keep a population of two million people in Gaza captive indefinitely and expect no consequences for that. It's like setting fire to gunpowder and then getting upset at the gunpowder for exploding. Palestinians have every right to break out of our cage. We have every right to fight back. And for the first time in 75 years, 
we've actually taken back our land. I'm not going to stand before you and shed tears over the settlers, the terrified settlers who have sat in years past and cheered on as bombs were dropping on Gaza. They would set up chairs and picnics on the hills to watch the bombs dropping down on us. And now they want to act like violence is something that is so disgusting and foreign. You've been perpetrating it upon us for years! I'm going to end with a quote by um, Franz Fanon, a great thinker and anti-colonial activist who said, Colonialism is violence in its most natural state and it will only be overcome with greater violence. So if you don't like it, if you don't like the violence, what are we going to do? Are we going to have a picnic of our own? Are we going to beg Israel to please be nice, to please stop bombing us? No! no. If they're not going to end the occupation, like we've been calling for decades, if they're not going to listen to international law, if they're not going to listen to the pleading of Palestinians every time we come to these protests, then they cannot act surprised when Palestinians fight back. Free Palestine and glory to the Palestinian resistance!
Jews against the occupation. Why have you come here today? Because oppressed people need to support oppressed people, and Israel is a colonial, apartheid, genocidal state, and it does not represent anything to do with being Jewish at all. It exploited my innocence when I was younger, I was a Zionist, and I lived in Israel, I learned the language, and then I learned, and as soon as I started to learn, I went further and further and I realized the horror of this state exploiting our trauma from the Holocaust, ruthlessly exploiting us to oppress another people who deserve the same human and national rights as everybody else. So to stand up in support is the very least I can do, especially after having been made complicit in their criminality when I was too young to know. I joined in 2014, which was the first time I had a television after many years, and I saw Israel's massacre in Gaza. And I was glued for 51 days to this horror. And that was when I fully and finally separated my Jewishness from this brutality, this occupying fascist supremacist brutality. So you're marching today with the... I march today with the Palestinians, just as I march with Aboriginals for justice in this colonial settlement, and I will always support oppressed peoples. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thanks for asking me.